Hello and thank you for watching this podcast. My name is Tim Bevan and I'm the Bream UK Non-Domestic Schemes Manager. Today I'm going to be telling you about the Bream 2011 version changes. In summary, I will begin by outlining the background and context for these changes and therefore the drivers behind them. I will then highlight the main technical changes. In doing so, outlining the benefits of the new version to its users and how it continues to uphold our common principles of achieving affordable, low-carbon, sustainable buildings. Bream for New Buildings is updated every two years. Typically, these updates are driven by two factors, changes in regulation and the accelerating rate of change in sustainable design, product innovation and building procurement. Both of these factors have played a large role in the development and launch of the Bream 2011 version. In particular, the new Partel and its objective for the 25% aggregate improvement in building performance has required us to rethink how Bream benchmarks energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions. The industry has also provided us with invaluable feedback over the past year in terms of both detailed technical challenges and opportunities and more broadly how Bream can continue to support and drive transformational change in delivering low carbon, low cost sustainable buildings. In addition to regulatory drivers and industry feedback, the new version is being driven by two other complementary developments, BRE Global's International Code for a Sustainable Built Environment and the emergence of European standards for the sustainability of construction works, details of which you can hear about in one of the other online podcast presentations. These initiatives, alongside the UN Environment Programme's goal of implementing a common global carbon metric for buildings, are playing an increasingly vital role in steering the agenda for methodologies such as BREEAM and how it quantifies and reports whole life building impacts. So, given these drivers, how has BREEAM responded through its biennial update of the new construction scheme? Not surprisingly, the main changes relate to energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions and, in this respect, we have established a new assessment methodology and benchmark of performance which builds and improves on the current approach. Currently, in the 2008 version of BREEAM, the CO2 index is used as the measure of buildings' carbon performance. This will no longer be the case in the 2011 version. Instead, BREEAM will focus on, en on the energy carbon hierarchy, measuring and benchmarking building performance in three key areas. The first, a building's energy demand. Secondly, its energy consumption. And thirdly, its carbon dioxide emission levels. A set number of BREEAM credits will be available for each area and rewarded on the basis of a building's improvement in performance over the notional building for each measure. The key impact of this change is that credits will no longer be awarded solely for performance against the CO2 emission scale. Without due consideration to reducing energy demand and the efficient use of energy by a building's regulated systems, a higher number of credits will be unattainable. Therefore, for any building achieving zero carbon status, will not only need to demonstrate its net carbon emissions are zero, but also that it achieves best practice in terms of energy demand and consumption. It is important to emphasise that despite this change in approach, the assessment of energy and CO2 emissions will continue to align with the requirements for building regulations. Outputs provided by the National Calculation Methodology will still be used to determine performance. No alternative or additional energy modelling will be required in terms of verifying building performance. Through the use of minimum standards and the update of the benchmark scale, this new methodology will serve clients and the wider industry as both a driver for and measure of success towards delivering low and zero carbon energy efficient buildings. It's not just the energy benchmarks that are changing. We have updated and expanded the water consumption methodology and construction waste benchmarks. The number of building types which can be assessed using Bream's non-domestic water consumption calculator has been expanded and the activity database behind the methodology revised to reflect up-to-date building functions and occupancy usage patterns. The construction waste benchmarks have also been updated to reflect levels of best practice. This has been done using construction waste data collected from real projects using BRE's smart waste system. In addition, to bring the construction waste issue in line with energy and water assessment issues, a minimum standard has been set at the BREEAM outstanding rating level and an exemplary level of performance defined with the potential to award a credit for innovation. 
These changes should provide users with a more accurate reflection of how their building performs against standard and best practice levels at the new construction stage of the life cycle. Also, in the case of water consumption, they provide a less prescriptive whole building approach to calculating performance and one that is consistent across a range of building types. The BREAM scheme for new buildings has, by and large, focused on the building impacts that occur and become embodied in the building at the design and construction stages of the life cycle. Its remit and boundary not going beyond practical completion and handover in terms of monitoring and verification. However, the period after construction and handover of the building, during initial occupation, currently presents a potential pitfall in terms of translating sustainable design into sustainable operation or indeed confirmation that the building is as sustainable as intended. Much can be learned from this period and used to inform design and construction standards and practices, including BREAM. To support this, BREAM 2011 has overhauled its approach to sustainable commissioning and procurement, extending the remit of the new construction version into the initial operational phase. In particular, the new version sets criteria at both the standard and exemplary level in terms of both stakeholder participation through post-occupancy evaluation and post-construction and handover aftercare in terms of a soft landings approach and the collection and reporting of occupant satisfaction, energy and water consumption data. This change aims to bridge the life cycle stages covered by the BREAM new construction and the new schemes, not only helping to support delivery of sustainable design into sustainable operation, but providing the platform for continued monitoring, reporting and benchmarking of data through the BREAM assessment, verification and reporting process. As well as technical additions, we have worked on structural and presentational aspects of the scheme to ensure it continues to provide clients and users with an easy means of specifying environmental performance targets and quantifying reporting and benchmarking key building impacts and performance of their buildings. These changes have also been steered by current compliance with our new code for sustainable built environment and future compliance with emerging European standards. Many of the individual BREAM assessment issues have been reviewed in terms of their ongoing inclusion and how to efficiently address the impacts they are assessing across a range of building types. To this end, a number of individual issues have been removed and their criteria consolidated. To enable this, we have reclassified many of the assessment issues. To give you a flavour of the degree to which this has been done, in the 2011 version there are 49 assessment issues, which compares to BREEAM 2008 and its 100 assessment issues. Despite this drop in the number of issues, the number of BREEAM credits available has remained broadly the same and, in some instances, has increased as a result of greater flexibility in benchmarking the impacts. As a result of this reorganisation, we have been able to consolidate the separate scheme documents into one concise scheme document, whilst maintaining the breadth of criteria and standards that go into defining the performance requirements for the range of non-domestic building types covered in BREAM. Through consolidating the scheme in this manner, it is our intention to ensure that it is even easier to measure and benchmark building performance and deliver BREAM certified buildings in an efficient, cost-effective and value-added manner one which dovetails with the design and procurement process. It has always been BREAM's intention to support clients and design teams in delivering and benchmarking sustainable buildings in a robust manner. A real advantage of BREAM, therefore, is its ability to act as a barometer of sustainability for the UK's new and existing building stock. In terms of new buildings, BREAM 2011 will make it easier to evaluate and report a building's key environmental impacts and therefore for BRE Global to report those impacts using the certification process via the Green Book Live listing website. In turn, this will make it easier for clients and building users to compare their building's performance across the life cycle stages as well as performance with other buildings. Specifically, BREAM 2011 will enable quantification and reporting at the design and construction life cycle stages of construction and operational related energy consumption and carbon dioxide emissions, the embodied carbon of the main building elements, construction and operational water consumption, construction waste and indoor air quality. By using BREAM in this way, it is our intention to increase its use as a means of comparing the performance of buildings across the stages of the life cycle, 
both individually for building owners and occupiers, and as a wider measure of industry's performance. This is just a summary of the changes we have made to Bream. If you visit the Bream website, you'll find a detailed technical report outlining the technical changes and additions we have made. From March 2011, you'll be able to visit the Bream website and download the Bream 2011 scheme document, where you'll be able to read how BRE, through Bream, is hoping to drive transformational change in the sustainable design and procurement of buildings over the next few years. Thank you.